result there arriving uh, at the count. We'll bring you the result there at Van as soon as we get it. Well, as we're saying, uh, such low turnout. So do uh, Victoria's candidates really have the mandate to make big changes? Well, to discuss this, we're joined by the former independent candidate for the PCC South Yorkshire, Gillian Radcliffe, and the president-elect of the Superintendents Association of England and Wales, Irene Curtis, who takes up her post in March, and she joins us from Clitheroe. Um, to you first, Gillian, what about the turnout that we've seen over the last 24 hours? Has this been a disaster for the whole process? It's pretty abysmal. Um, we were getting predictions of 18% turnout, which would have been bad enough. Seems not to have even met that low prediction. And it is disappointing because it's an important post. But I think the real problem is that people have never really understood what it is about and why it's going to bring them any benefits. So why did that message not get out to the public? Um, I'm not sure the government tried hard enough. Um, it was a communications failure in my view. They've had many years to think about how to get the message across, but now they're turning around and blaming the media for uh, not creating that understanding. And in my view, and my field of expertise is communications, it was really about getting clear messages at the right time, getting information about candidates out, and they've just failed to do that. Irene Curtis, though, the point has been made by the chairman of the Conservative Party that now we are going to have one person who can hold the police to account and who themselves will be held to account by the voters. Uh, do you think, on the basis of this turnout, that the police commissioners will actually have a mandate to hold their local police forces uh, up to account? Well, actually, I've been quite disappointed that all the media coverage today is featured purely on the turnout. And whilst I understand that people want to have a post-mortem about the turnout and the mandate, actually, what's really important here is that we've got a whole new governance set up for policing for the next three or four years. Uh, and I think I'd prefer to look forward and actually look at the opportunities that are now presented by having a police and crime commissioner working alongside a chief constable to help protect our public. And we need to talk about how that relationship's going to work and, and how the police and crime commissioner is going to do their job rather than what mandate they've got I mean, to look, do it. They do need to have some authority, though, if it's going to work. And it has to be said, senior policemen from ACPO down have been very critical of this idea at all. Now we've had the fiasco of the turnout. I mean, there, there's presumably going to be a problem with police governance in uh, coming months. Well, the, reali the reality is we are where we are in terms of we have, uh, by the end of today, we will have 41 elected police and crime commissioners in this country. Uh, and they have a mandate by the virtue of the fact that they've been elected. What we need to do now is make sure that there's a positive working relationship between those police and com uh, crime commissioners and chief constables so that they can do the job that they've been elected to do, which is to protect the public and reduce crime in this country. So you think it's going to be an improvement? Uh, in terms of the management of the police on um, a local basis? I, I don't think any of us know whether this is going to be an improvement or not because it's such a new and radical change from what we're used to. But what we've got a responsibility as professionals in the police service, we've got a responsibility to try and make this work for the public. That there's no other option for us. We have to try and make this work and we will only do that by working with police and crime commissioners and developing strong professional relationships. My members are the senior operational leaders in the police service and their job is to implement policing on a daily basis on the, on the streets of England and Wales. And, and that's what they will continue to do, hopefully with, with the support of a police and crime commissioner. Gillian Bradford, back here in the studio, how much of a problem do you think it was that perhaps there was a lot of similarity about what all the candidates were proposing, you know, more bobbies on the beat, reducing antisocial behaviour, reducing bureaucracy. Everybody wants to see that in the police, it seems. What was, did the candidates have enough to differentiate between them? That's a really good question, and I think the answer is no, because, as you say, everybody comes out with the motherhood and apple pie responses, and the real issue is how are they going to deliver those things, um, not what. I mean, we all want the same things when it comes to crime reduction, but we've got to find ways of distinguishing. Are you saying that you'll reduce the the cost through privatisation? Or are you saying you'll do it through collaboration with other forces? There are whole lots of distinctions in how these things are delivered. And I don't think that the debate has ever really got down to that level. You actually pulled out of the race because of lack of funding. Yes. Do, you do you think one of the lessons is 
given that the government said it wanted to encourage independent candidates, that there needs to be better funding available for them? Well, I think certainly the barriers were enormous for independents, and I can see from the results as I was coming in that a couple of independents have done pretty well. But they've done well in the areas where they spent 25 or 50,000 pounds on their campaign. And that's really beyond most of us, even if we do have the professional know how to do the PCC's job. Thank you both very much indeed. This is Sky News coming up. We're live in Austin with Sky Sports F1's Man in the Paddock.